constituted, comprising three members, myself, Dr. Jashree from Pediatrics and Dr. Dr. Nusrat from uh, Department of Pharmacology. The mandate of this committee is to review the clinical trials which has been already approved by the Ethics Committee and we discussed among ourselves and decided to start with the extramural clinical, uh, extramural funded uh, clinical trials to start with. The monitoring of these clinical trials is of two types, on-site monitoring and off-site monitoring. The on-site monitoring is done by selecting the clinical trial based on the IEC data and the prioritization of the trial is based on the risk involved on the clinical trial, sponsorship, whether it is pharmaceutical company or the government organization, and the phase of the study. Whereas the off site monitoring is based on the reports sent by the investigators to the ISC. And these reports, when reviewed, if there is any ambiguity or any question to be asked, then the on site monitoring may be done subsequently. For any on-site monitoring, we inform the principal investigator beforehand, date and time is fixed as per convenience of the committee members as well as the principal investigators and his or her team. The team is requested to keep all the trial related documents and the supplies available for the review and also to be present personally so as to answer the queries arising. So what do we evaluate on the on-site monitoring? We try to take care of all the steps of the ongoing clinical protocol and we do make it sure that the insurance coverage policy which has been taken that covers the total duration of the clinical trial and its due attention is given to its wording as well as terms and conditions. Then regarding the concept process as has already been discussed, all the salient features are taken into consideration and now the written consent has been changed over to audio visual consent and I am glad to say that some of the investigators they have already started recording the audio visual consent. Then all the steps of any clinical trial are taken uh, with due attention and it is seen that there is no deviation from the original approved protocol. And if there is any deviation from the original approved protocol or any side effect is noted during the clinical trial, it is seen that these communications are done appropriately in time and adequately to the IEC as well as to the Data Safety Monitoring Committee. The source data and the documents which includes the case records of the patients, investigations of the patient, OPD cards, registration, and so on, all these, uh, these uh, documents are verified in uh, original or if the photo if original is not available, then the photocopies of these original documents are verified. And it is seen that the protocol card number, the investigation report and the subsequent follow-up of the patients is available. Similarly, the participants who are enrolled in the clinical trial when they come to the institute, their travel bills, their investigation bills, if they have been advised to get certain investigations done from the outside or if they have purchased any medicines prescribed from outside, these bills are reimbursed to them in time and appropriately. And unfortunately, if any serious adverse event has occurred or death has occurred, it is seen that they are the family is compensated in time as per the law. Then trial supplies of drugs and trial related logs, they are also verified and that includes where the drug is being stored, how the temperature is being maintained, how the drugs is being dispensed and the accountability of the tablets. All these things are verified on the site monitoring. On the basis of this, a report is prepared and on the next coming uh, IEC meeting, the report is presented and subsequently, the report is also sent to the principal investigator and the principal investigator is supposed to reply back and take the due precaution within 30 days. So far, we have done four uh, clinical, uh, clinical trial reviews in the last four months and some of the observations which we have uh, seen during these reviews is, fun, is such that one is that insurance coverage was not proper. In one of the projects, 
where it has been extended, it was seen that the duration of the insurance was not extended in time. So that can create some problem if anything untoward effect occurs during that period. So it is to be seen that the coverage is done properly and the wording is also to be noted. In one uh, project, the wording was such that it was difficult to judge whether the medical problems will be reimbursed to them uh, as per the insurance policy. So that is to be seen. Then there were some discrepancies in the source document verification. The important information regarding the clinical status of the patient having some untoward effect and the subsequent follow-up was not being recorded. Then there were some frequencies in the record of severe uh, adverse events that such as the recurrent hypoglycemia. The report was available over the recurrent hypoglycemia but it was not mentioned in the uh, case report and it was not communicated to the IAC. Then sometimes the, we have noted that there was a wrong categorization of an adverse event. Uh, there was a patient who had uh, folliculitis, but it was categorized as drug rash, which can just confuse the data, so appropriate categorization should be done. Similarly, for the record uh, maintenance, the, if the person is prescribed any concomitant drug, the indication should be clearly defined and it should be mentioned in the protocol and the subsequent documents. And the uh, investigational product code also should be affixed properly. Then compensation and reimbursement largely we found satisfactory in these four, uh, trial, in four trial reviews. However, there was a delay in communication of the adverse effects to the IAC. Then maintenance of the trial supplies was adequate and I am happy that the audio visual recordings have been done in two projects quite well, they were quite impressive, but in one of the projects it was noted that these audiovisual consent recording was accessible easily on the computer. So we had advised them that all this data should be well uh, maintained confidential and so we advised them to have the uh, password uh, protection and on the whole all these things have to be kept very confidential, one has to be very particular about this. So with all these observations, I think the, all the principal investigators and the court investigators are uh, going to take care of these minute things so that the further functioning becomes easy and we can look after the more uh, clinical trials in detail and uh, depending upon the manpower, we will be subsequently including the intramural clinical trials as well. Thank you. Yeah, Pai, you have my camera. Okay. No worries. <laughs> I think everyone, thank you, ma'am. I think everyone's tired. There's running tea going on downstairs. So I think if anyone wants some tea, can just get it from there. And I think you know, after we finish this, we can go down for a cup of tea. tea. Uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Nasr uh, for the last talk. So I stand between you and the running tea. Um, and this is about Data and Safety Monitoring Committee. It is a subcommittee of Institute Ethics Committee which is specifically uh, constituted to look into the serious adverse events associated with clinical trials. I'll just briefly tell why was this special subcommittee needed for this. Just two years ago, two to three years ago, there was a lot to you and cry about this occurring in clinical trials. This was in print media as well as electronic media. And uh, so much was its impact. If there was a modification made after several years in the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. This modification was called the Rule 122 BAB, the infamous Rule 122 BAB, which largely concentrated on the regulations associated with compensations for serious adverse events occurring in clinical trials. The basic message of this uh, entire set of regulations was that anything and everything, any or every kind of serious adverse event needed to be compensated. Uh, as a consequence of this, fresh ongoing clinical trials were stopped across many institutes and no clinical trial new clinical trial approvals were granted. 
this was not a very desirable situation and a way out was suggested by our beloved love, beloved uh, great professor Dheeraj Gupta. He said there should be a separate DSMC committee which could look into the serious adverse events and help the ethics committee in complying with the regulations which had been formulated. Soon after, there came a modification of the previous regulation. This was some kind of respite because some of the regulations which were given in points which were given in the rule 122 DAB were simply not possible to follow. Important changes made in this regulation were that regarding the investigational products, if they fail to show therapeutic benefits, the earlier guidelines said that if it fails to show therapeutic benefits, it made a case for compensation. Similarly, for placebo use in a placebo control trial. Now this has been changed and it has become, if as long as the standard care is provided, there is no case for compensation. The second point was about lifelong management of non-fatal serious adverse events. This has been, has been changed and it is now modified as till as long as it is required or till the time it is proven that the injury was not related to the participation in the clinical trial, whichever is earlier. There were other minor changes which were regarding the reporting time frames which were now more practical, more attainable and the authorities to whom the reports had to be made. With this background, the mandate to DSMC that was decided was that they would review the serious adverse events which were occurring in clinical trials which were conducted at PGI and which were approved by the Extramural Committee. The DSMC was also, look, was also empowered to look into the, um, uh, re, the case for compensation for SA. Now since we, have, we are dealing with serious <coughs> adverse events, what are serious adverse events? These are not to be confused with severe adverse events which are more of a gradation of adverse events. Serious adverse event is a very well defined entity which includes any untoward medical occurrence during clinical trial that is associated with death, associated with inpatient hospitalization, prolongation of already existing hospitalization, leads to persistent or significant disability or incapacity, leads to congenital anomaly or birth defect or is otherwise life threatening. All these things uh, have a potential for case for compensation. The cases, when it makes a case for compensation has been clearly defined in the present rules. These include if the injury of the death or death has occurred because of any of the following adverse effects of the investigational products, any clinical trial procedures involved in the study. So if it occurs because of a biopsy which was just indicated, which was just done for the purpose of the study, then it would make a case for compensation. Violation of the approved protocol, scientific misconduct or negligence by the sponsor or his representative or the investigator. Mind you, these things are very difficult to prove. Then, as I, as I had already mentioned, the points number 4 and 5 stand modified. Adverse effects due to concomitant medications, simply because these concomitant medications would have been given if there was any serious adverse event or any adverse event. Injury to child in utero because of the participation of parents in clinical trials. What does an investigator need to do when there is an up, when there is a serious adverse event at his or her site? The investigator needs to submit an initial report within 24 hours to the following: licensing authority, which is the Drug Controller General of India, sponsor or his representative. That would mean a contract research organization. The, which is taking care of the sponsor's trial and the chairperson of the ethics committee. A follow-up detailed report must come within 14 days and these have to be given to the same people already mentioned. If it is a fatal adverse event, then in addition it has to be given to the head of the institute. Many a times the two reports can be the same. At the initial time only, the, patient, the investigator is able to <coughs> come uh, make a detailed report. That also would do. There was a problem with the previous regulation that it has to be reported within 24 hours of occurrence of the adverse event. Now, the patient has come to you, received the drug supply and gone to the field, gone back to his home. So there is no way you can keep calling and finding out about the serious adverse event. 
a consideration was made for this and a clause has been added that if the principal investigator is able to explain the reason for the delay to the uh, best of understanding of the Drug Control Agenda of India, that would su suffice. How do you report it? There are two forms which have to be uh, submitted. These have been circulated to all the faculty members of the faculty email address. These forms are based on the uh, uh, Appendix 12 form which is uh, which has been a part of, uh, which has been in the modified amendment rule the, and uh, which is called the Appendix 12 form and the, within this is a sub form which is Appendix 11. Now many times the contents of Appendix 11 form and Appendix 12 form are overlapping but we cannot help it, they have to be there. The kind of information that you have to give is the details of the event, the start date, stop date, outcomes, what were the medications given, what is your assessment of relatedness, the investigator's details, the details of the <coughs> investigation.